Hey guys, welcome back to Time Drops and welcome to another review video. This time we're going to be taking a look at a real G-Shock fan's favourite, the GBX100 from the G-Lide family, and find out why so many people think this is in fact the best square G-Shock money can buy. As always, we'll be taking a look at the watch's history, its price, design and functionality, and then at the end of this video, taking all of these into consideration, I'll be giving you my overall verdict. If that sounds good to you, hit the subscribe button and join the awesome community we're building here, and then sit back, relax, and we'll jump right in. So this series first came to fruition just a short while ago in May of 2020. Revealed at Casio's Spring and Summer exhibition, the GBX was targeted toward G-Shock loving surfing fanatics thanks to its tie, time and graphing capabilities, which we'll get onto. But of course, thanks to its shape being the infamous square, these models also caught the attention of all G-Shock fans around the world. This is thanks to the first ever G-Shock, the DW5000, creating a real cult with its octagonal square-like design, which I suppose I'm part of. We've seen lots of evolutions of the Square G-Shock over the years, but this was the first to take its functionality levels to new heights. The original release saw the launch of three models, a black GBX100-1, the blue or turquoise GBX100-2, and then my pick of the bunch, this white and black G-Shock G-Lide GBX100-7. At the time, these watches sold out almost instantly in many locations around the world, and continue to prove as popular today. But why? First up, let's take a look at its price. In the US, this watch has a retail price of $160, while in Japan, 24,200 yen, and right here in the UK, 149 pounds. Now, this is effectively another 50% on top of what you'd expect to pay for your everyday DW5600, and while quite a significant jump, still remains in the quote unquote affordable watch category of under $200. Taking a look at its features on paper though, its incredibly long list of additional functionality plus its enhanced design finishes make you quickly start to realise this isn't such a hike in price after all. Let's talk more about that design though. As you can see, this G-Lide features a white strap with blue accents, a black resin case and a brilliant stainless steel hairline finish. The combination of white, black and silver creates one heck of a statement for me. I love how multi-dimensional this watch looks, the contrast between each section makes it really stand out just as a G-Shock should. Taking a closer look at its face, this is where the model really comes into its own. Three letters, M-I-P. This stands for memory and pixel. This type of LCD display enhances the visibility of everything this watch has to offer and put simply, is awesome. This feature eliminates the usual legibility issues some experience with negative displays. It's big, bold and bright and looks even better with its light, which is ignited by pressing the large white button at six o'clock. You've also got four buttons on the outer casing of this timepiece, titled Display, Mode, Start, which is also highlighted in blue, nice touch G-Shock, and Lap, which will allow you to navigate through and manage all of the functions I keep mentioning but haven't spoken about yet. So here we go. With the GBX100, you will receive G-Shock's infamous shock resistance, 200 meter water resistance, mineral glass protecting its screen, an auto LED backlight or super illuminator with 1.5 or three second afterglow. I always recommend to change this to three seconds. Well time, stopwatch, countdown timer, four daily alarms, a full auto calendar and 12 or 24 hour format. And also one of its major features, Bluetooth to link to your smartphone. It also has an approximate battery life of two years, and this is certainly one to dive into some more. When you're looking at fitness or activity-based watches in general, you'll typically see that they require regular charging, whether that be once a week or even once a day. Well, with this G-Shock, you'll reap the benefits of the awesome battery life they provide, which significantly decreases watch-related admin if there's such a thing. You know what I'm talking about. Now, this may differ based on the frequency of activity or use of Bluetooth, but you certainly won't have to worry about putting it on charge every night. The watch also has a power saving function to help preserve that battery, so another plus. Then we have its measurement functions, which are what you all came here for, right? This timepiece includes training features such as a display of distance, speed, pace, and even everyone's favorite daily step count, thanks to its accelerometer. To track your recent progress, you can switch displays on the watch easily by hitting the top left display button and running through your daily step count on the first screen, your monthly distance covered on the second, and then you've got the option of viewing additional time zones on the third. Hitting the bottom right lap button will take you to the moon. Well, kind of. You'll first see its tide graph, which displays its tide level for a specific date and time. 
You will then see its moon data, which displays the moon age of the specific date or moon phase. You can also view the sunrise and sunset time of whatever beach or surfing spot you're at. And this is enhanced by pairing the watch with your smartphone and installing the G-Shock Move app. Here you can select from approximately 3,300 locations to check tide time ahead of time and sync to your watch. Pretty awesome, right? The app also gives you a graphical representation of all of those functions I previously mentioned, allowing you to manage the watch in its entirety from your phone. I find that I'm a bit split between the two. For most functions, I still like the old school way of using buttons on the outside of the actual watch. While for some, admittedly, setting via the app is much easier and quicker than navigating through the watch. So it all depends on your preference and how you like to operate. The main thing is you've got the option of both. As well as that, you also get phone notifications sent right to your wrist. This includes texts, calls, emails, etc. So you can check on quick glance whether you want to bother reaching for your pocket or not. The app will also take you through all of the instructions on how best to get set up, enabling location and entering your current age, height and weight. And once your profile's set up, you can then set your goals for the upcoming weeks, months and years. But remember, whatever you set, you'll then be reminded of what you need to do by the app in order to achieve them. Being completely honest, the app itself could use a bit of TLC. In some areas, it can take a little while to make changes. The more recent Casio Watches app is much more like it. I always say I'd like to see a merge of the two, and perhaps that's something we'll see in the future. That being said, this one's got a lot to take care of and ultimately does the job pretty well. And finally, in terms of dimensions, this watch is 50.9 millimeters in length, 46 millimeters in width, and 14.7 millimeters thick. Now this does make the GBX100 one of the largest square G-Shock models, but its proportions provide a streamlined aesthetic and its weight of 66 grams makes this one incredibly comfortable on the wrist and certainly light and durable enough to take on any adventure. Now if you're familiar with the channel or G-Shocks in general, you'll know that a very similar watch to this released just last year, the GBD200. So let's do a quick comparison. Well, for starters, they feature the exact same functionality, except the newer GBD200 is purely an everyday fitness watch, as opposed to the extreme sports design G-Lite GBX100, so it doesn't feature any of the tide, moon, or sun measurements. From an aesthetic perspective, the size dimensions are pretty much exactly the same, with the GBD200 being 1.5mm shorter in length than the GBX100, 0.1mm smaller in width, yet 0.3mm more in depth. So, nothing really to digest there. The GBD200 so far are all made out of resin only, whereas the GBX100 features that stunning brushed stainless steel on its bezel. This does mean that the GBX comes in at 8 grams heavier when compared to the GBD200's 58 grams. Now it makes total sense that the GBD200 would be lighter, as it's designed specifically for running. But personally, I think it's well worth the added weight for that striking bit of stainless steel, and you'll certainly have no problem running with this either. Price-wise, the GBD200 retails at $10 under the GBX100 at $150, but again, considering its enhanced functionality and superior design elements, it's clear to see why so many are sticking with the GBX100. Now, with all that being said, let's get into my overall verdict. So what do I think of the GBX100? Well, it's fair to say that I think we've found out why it's up there as one of, if not the best Square G-Shock money can buy. It's good looks, incredible durability, price and insane functionality and feature list make this one a serious all-rounder and I can see why so many would consider this the perfect daily timepiece. Now this isn't exactly breaking news and I think I just touched on it by comparing it to the GBD200. There's been newer models that have released since, this is two years old after all, but it's clear to see why people keep going back to it because of everything it has to offer. Will I be using the tide or moon measurements on a daily basis? No. but. When I go to the beach, you can bet your bottom dollar I'll be telling everyone I'm with when the tide's coming in. All in all, this is a seriously cool timepiece, and if you're a surfer, well, even better. If you're interested in getting one of these yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below to Watch Shop. They're an awesome retailer and one I personally use all the time. And with all that being said, that just about wraps this one up, guys. What do you think about the GBX100? Have you got one yourself? Comment down below and let everybody know your experience. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for loads more reviews and unboxings of some of your favorite watch releases. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.